All right, everybody, welcome to the DUC here on the campus of Pacific. Zach Bayerty joined by head men's basketball coach Leonard Perry, ahead of the WCC tournament. LP, how you doing? Man? How are you, Z? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And uh, the Tigers head to the tournament. Actually, from the time we're recording this tomorrow, uh, you travel down, have a couple of days in Vegas, and yeah. then uh, the team plays at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday at the Orleans Arena. They'll take on Pepperdine, and we'll get into all that in, in a moment. But uh, first and foremost, seven wins in league, uh, tied for fifth. Uh, that's... I think seven more wins than a lot of people thought that that you guys might get this year. Uh, it, it was uh, it was you know by many standards, uh, as far as the perspective of other people, an overachievement this year. Uh, yeah. I know you probably wish there were a couple more wins in there, but just in a vacuum, uh, seven wins in this league in a year where it's wide open, pretty impressive. Yeah, it was it was outstanding actually, Zach. Seven wins. Um, it's the third most um, that we've had in the WCC period. Um, so we're tied there uh, for the third most wins since we've been in this conference, um, which is really huge for us. Um, we had a lot of firsts this year um, with seven days to go, eight days to go in the league. Um, we're playing for the fourth seed um, at LMU. That one got away from us. Um, going into the very last game uh, against Portland, um, a team which we've, we've had zero success uh, with, um, since I've been the head coach for a little over a year, um, we were able to, to win that game. Um, and all the way up until that night at about 10 o'clock, we're, we're still playing for the sixth seed. Um, you know, so ended up with the seventh seed, but we're tied for fifth overall. We have the same conference record as San Francisco and BYU. Um, just an unbelievable accomplishment based on where the experts had us picked. Um, I'm really proud of our kids and the progress uh, that they made throughout the year. Um, we've had some tremendous wins, and, and the season's far from over. It is. Where did your team start to turn the corner? Because you go back to December and had some tough losses at home. There was a stretch there where it got a little bit dicey. But you know, in league, you start with that loss versus BYU, which was just a, a calamity trying to get ready for that game. That was right after Christmas. Southwest yeah. had all the – sorry, Southwest they had all the <laughs> – you know, the, the flight mix-ups and, and uh, the backlog. So you had a lot of kids not get to campus until, I mean, the last minute yeah. prior to that BYU game. Yeah. Uh, you rebound with a win against LMU. Obviously, they had an outstanding year, uh, Loyal Marymount. But did. where did this team start to turn the corner? You know, I think we're still turning it. Um, we, we still haven't clicked on all cylinders. We have for stretches of games. Um, we put together uh, a really good game, a bounce back game against LMU um, after you mentioned the BYU uh, situation where our last guy didn't get back until maybe three hours before tip off um, in the BYU it's game. Um, so it's, it's part of it. It's, it's, part of, uh, it's part of our journey. And, um, you know, we, we, we bounce back and we play really well. And then we, we turn around and we have uh, – uh, a stretch or two where we have games where we, we don't quite finish it off. Um, and that happened to us throughout, throughout the year. Um, but, you know, I, I'm proud of how we competed. Um, we put ourselves in situations where we're right there um, at BYU, right before um, halftime. We, we got the game right where we needed. Um, and then we miss a block out, and they go on a run right before half. The last um, five minutes was tough. Last five minutes, we, we get. Uh, uh, a really good uh, Gonzaga team here in the best atmosphere I've seen since I've been here. Um, and we're tied at half uh, and we fight all the way to the very end, the bitter end. And it gets away from us, I think, with two minutes to go and we can't quite close the gap. But our kids played tremendously well and they proved to themselves um, that when they're, they're focused and, and they're locked in, um, we're pretty good. I have an idea in my head where this team started to turn a corner. This, the, you, you said they're still turning, which I for sure agree yeah. with. But you know where it started, I think, was where those back-to-back -back road wins at San Diego and at Pepperdine. Yes. Uh, you know, because I think it's yes. tough to go on the road, and not many people understand just how tough it is to go on the road, especially in this league, and win back-to-back -back games. And to do that, uh, you know, on a Southern California swing where you had a long bus ride from San Diego to Pepperdine, two completely different gyms, completely different environments. I thought that was really impressive. Those are huge. Uh, my kids have been resilient all year um, on the road. Um, we have the best road record along with uh, we had the, the, the most road wins um, in the WCC along with Gonzaga. No one has more than seven. 
Um, Gonzaga has seven, we have seven. Um, so our kids have been great on the road. You're right, Zach, those, those, were, um, those were two monumental wins for us. Um, got us off to a 2-0 league start. Um, and, and our kids really believed that they could, they could beat anybody in our conference. Um, and, and, and I was proud uh, the way they battled. Those are tough games. Um, we were down in both um, at different points during those games. And um, we got it together and pulled it out in the end. Um, you know, th there have been some other teams in our league that tried to do the same thing, couldn't get it done. Uh, I believe uh, uh, BYU was one um, at Pepperdine, could not get that done. Mm -hmm. Um, they lost one in Portland. Um, I know for sure. Um, lost in double overtime. Yeah, at fuck the ending there. Yeah, yeah, really did. So um, difficult place to win. Um, super talented team. And the thing I have to keep reminding um, ourselves um, is we have the second youngest team in the league. Uh, Pepperdine's the youngest. Um, we're the second. And um, our kids are, are, are still figuring it out. Um, but I, I, I think you know, you mentioned this. I think uh, after maybe uh, St. Mary's game that we want to be playing our, our best basketball towards the end, and I still think that carrot's right in front of us. Tell us about the style that Pacific likes to play. And yeah. it's, folks that haven't watched a lot of Pacific basketball might not know this, but I mean, this team thrives playing a very up-tempo style. And, and it was an eye-opener. I know you weren't on the trip. You were obviously watching yeah. close, but to yeah. start the year, uh, in North Dakota, you know, unfortunately you were under the weather, couldn't make that trip, but those two wins at North Dakota State and at North Dakota, I'm like, wow, man, this team can score 90 plus points a night, and, and not only can they, but that's the type of style that, that you guys want to play. Can you tell us why that style works for you? <laughs> well, well, I think you know a little bit about me, Zach. That's not the style I was raised on. Correct. Um, I'm, a, I'm a defending and rebounding Correct. guy. If you. If you'd have told me we were going to have a program where um, we're fourth in scoring in the WCC and Gonzaga's in the top tier in the country, top two or three teams in scoring, and we're fourth, um, I, I'd have said, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I believe that. Um, we're fourth in assists um, you know, in our conference. Uh, we happen to have a collection of young men um, that can put the ball in the basket. And as much as I want to defend and rebound, the thing that they've taught me is that at the end of the day, you need one more point than your opposition and you get a win. Um, and it's a fun, it's a fun style of play. Um, we get up and down the floor. When we're running, we're good. When the ball's moving, we're really good. Um, and they've taught me that this is a style of play the kids like to play. Mm -hmm. um, kids don't like to play a walk it up, grind it, um, you know, upper 40s, lower 50s. Uh, type of game. Um, the, the game is positionless. Uh, we have a group of kids that are that. And I think our fans, um, you know, faculty, students, and staff love watching our kids play. I get emails all the time about how much fun they are um, to watch play. So we're going to play that way. We're going to get up and down the floor. Um, and, and, you know, to the old Hugh Watson adage, you know, Leonard. <laughs> He used to say, an uh, old coach of mine used to say, we're going to dribble it high and let it fly. So uh, right. that's what we've been doing, and we've been successful with it. Um, I'm happy with it, and I think our kids love playing that style of play. In order to play that style, you have to have a good floor general, a good facilitator. We could highlight a lot of different players on this team, but I want to talk specifically about Mo Oda because he's a true freshman, not only a true freshman coming from across the country, he's from the Bronx. You know, New York kids kind of hit different. And Mo has not been intimidated by a lot of the environments in this league, and uh, and he's one of the best assist, assist people in the country. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Mo and and his uh, and his growth this year? Well, the first thing I like to say to him is congratulations. You know, I'm I'm really happy for him. He made the All Freshman Team in the WCC. Um, when at the beginning of the year the preseason deals come out, we had no players um, that were on preseason anything in the WCC. So. I'm, I'm really proud of him, um, fantastic young man. And I tell people all the time, when I meet with him, I go, Mo, you know, we have these conversations. These are the things that I need you to do better. And when he looks at me in bewilderment, I always look at, back at him and go, all I'm asking you to do is be perfect. Just be perfect, you'll be fine. Um, easy as that. Yeah, just easy as that. <laughs> just be perfect, don't, don't make any mistakes. But he's a true freshman and uh, for him to go, 
from, he started out um, playing pretty decent at Stanford, um, played pretty well at North Dakota, North Dakota State, but we came home and played against some real athletic teams, um, and he stumbled, and, and he stopped playing the minutes um, that he was getting early um, because the ball wasn't going in the basket, and I didn't want him to identify with um, just scoring. Um, I wanted him to be a floor general. Um, and he started buying into that, and once he bought into it um, full bore, he, he became a starter. And We put the ball in his hands, and he's ran our offense. He's really smart. He's cerebral. He keeps our tempo going. Um, he keeps our pace going. And when he's on a fast break, he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly who needs the ball where. And um, our kids love playing with him. They, they love playing with him. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just so proud of him um, and the progress that he's made this year. And I think for years to come, he's going to be a really good player for us. Here we're joined by head men's basketball coach Leonard Perry, head of the WCC tournament. Now I want to delve into the tournament a bit uh, and, and the first round matchup with Pepperdine. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's tough to beat a team three times. However, I feel like Pepperdine is a favorable matchup for your team as far as they'll allow you to get your pace and kind of play the style you want to play. And that's not to say you're guaranteeing anything, but uh, as far as just the matchup on paper, I feel like Pepperdine has been a favorable matchup because uh, it allows you to get your type of style game. Yeah, you know, L Lorenzo gets his kids to, uh, to really execute. <clears throat> Offensively, they play really fast. Um, Mitchell, Lewis, uh, Malat, th those guys are three of the more talented um, players in our league. Um, Lewis is, you know, from what I'm hearing, it's going to be a lottery pick. Mm -hmm. um, anytime a team has a lottery pick, that means on any given night, you know, this guy can jump up and score 30, 40 points. Um, so we want to we want to get back and transition, um, and we've got to find a way to limit them to one shot. If we can do that and get out on the break, um, our depth has been good for us in these games um, against them, and. We're going to need it in this game. Um, it's a, it's a one-shot deal. Um, we don't get uh, uh, you know uh, we don't get to play them Thursday and then you know on Saturday get another crack at it. Um, I'm sure he's telling them they've been really close. Um, they've they've had the lead in, in both games that, that we played them. Um, it, it's very difficult to beat a team three three times, but I'm excited for our kids. Um, it's that time of year and. Um, we, we don't get another 40 minutes. Um, we don't have a guaranteed practice time um, on Friday. You have to earn that practice time. And we're gonna go into practice today. Um, we'll cover some details and we'll be very direct with our kids. And you're gonna have to fight for the next 40 minutes that you get. You're gonna have to fight for it. Um, and Pepperdine's not gonna cooperate. But that being said, we have had success and um, I'm looking forward to to play in this game on Thursday. I think our kids are looking forward to it. And all we want to do is have another game um, on Friday. That, that's all we, I don't care who we're playing on Thursday, we just want to play on Friday. I, sp I think it speaks to the depth of the league. You have a team, you're playing, finish 10th in Pepperdine, yeah. and that team has an NBA lottery pick, yes. essentially. You know? <laughs> and I think, I think they're in, you know, it tells people a lot about the WCC and yeah. even the teams that are quote unquote at the bottom. Yeah. They got dudes, man. <laughs> they got dudes. They have very, very good players. Um, San Diego has a guy who's got over a thousand points, over a thousand rebounds. <laughs> you know, um, everybody has really, really good players. St. Mary's is playing with a first round draft pick. Gonzaga, Gonzaga's always got first round draft picks. Um, you know, BYU's talented. San Francisco's got um, um, 2,000 point scores, I think three, but 2,000 point scores for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then Santa Clara's got another first round draft pick. It's yeah, gonna, Pajemski. Yeah, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna play in the NBA. So the goal is um, for us to keep improving and you know um, get our guys to develop in the right way. And then we're gonna have a, a draft pick here um, soon if we keep doing what we're doing. Lastly, LP, I know to win that game on, on Thursday, you probably want to see your guys score at a high clip, but what else has to happen to get that win on Thursday? We, we've got to, Zach, we've got to get back in transition. We've got to get back in transition. We've got to stay in front of Lewis, um, and we can't let uh, uh, Mitchell, and most importantly, Porter's been playing fantastic. He can't have 
25 and, and 12 rebounds. Um, that'll break our backs. Um, it'll be very important for us to try to contain him as best we can um, because Porter's playing really, really well. Zedek is playing really well. Um, he's shooting the ball now for him. He was three or four from three um, in their last game. So we've got a certain way we have to play defensively, um, and we've got to take care of the basketball. Um, if we do that, you know, um, and we get the ball up the floor and we're sharing it, and we've got 15 or more assists, I like our, I like our chances. It's Leonard Perry, coach. Looking forward to seeing your team play at the tournament on Thursday. Thanks, Good luck. Zach. Appreciate it.